If you missed the news, Final Cut Pro 11 is here and the most exciting new feature in my opinion is the magnetic mask. Check this out. It's super powerful. One thing that really surprised me is how well the magnetic mask works with wispy hairs. I mean, just look at how incredibly accurate this mask is. And it's pretty amazing when your subject is obscured by something else. For example, look at how this mask tracks this car when it moves behind these poles. In this video, I'm going to show you five practical ways to use the magnetic mask in your videos, starting with adding text behind subjects. I have a shot of this man that is lost in the forest, and in order to have the background and my subject on two different layers, I need to duplicate this clip. I can do that by holding down the option key and dragging a copy of the clip on top of itself. I'll use the shortcut Control T to add a title, and I'll go into the inspector window and adjust the text and the style of this title to something like this. Next, I'll head over to the effects browser, and under the masks and keying category, I'll grab the magnetic mask effect and drag and drop that onto my viewer window. Notice how Final Cut Pro uses AI to identify the subject. And once I let go of the mouse, Final Cut Pro creates a selection around this guy. I can use the plus and minus tools here to refine the mask. By clicking to add points, I can essentially add to the mask. And by holding down the option key and using the minus tool, I can remove sections from the mask. I'll undo these refinements since the mask looked perfect as is. You also have these little brush tools over here which help you make your selection. Once I'm happy with my mask, I want to track that mask, essentially rotoscoping my subject out of the scene. Using these buttons up top, I can track a single frame backwards or forwards, or I can track only backwards or only forwards. Or if I hit the Analyze button, Final Cut Pro will track the mask around my subject in both directions. Final Cut Pro tracks the mask really quickly. This is happening in real time on an M1 Max MacBook Pro. And once tracked, I can scrub through the clip to preview the mask, and it looks like the magnetic mask did a great job. Then I'll hit Done. If I need to, I can adjust the feathering of this mask in the inspector window. Now, all I need to do is drag my title below this clip of my isolated subject. Instead of dragging, I can use the new keyboard shortcut in Final Cut Pro 11, which is Option and the up or down arrows, which allows you to change the stack order of your clips. And it looks like this. The great thing about the new magnetic mask is that you're able to use the mask alongside your shape and color masks when you're doing color correction. I have a color wheels adjustment applied to this clip, and when I click on the mask icon over here, you'll see I have my usual options to add a shape mask or a color mask, but I also have a new option which allows me to add a magnetic mask. I'll add the magnetic mask and click on my subject over here. It does a decent job in this lighting, but I can refine the mask as needed and then hit Analyze to track the mask. I'll hit Done, and now any adjustments I make to these color wheels will only affect my subject. In this case, I might boost the mid-tones to make my subject a little brighter. I'll also boost the highlights. I'll drop the shadows down a little bit so that the contrast still looks good, and then I'll boost the saturation on the global slider just a little bit. I can turn this effect off and back on again so you can see the difference that that makes. Now these changes were made inside the mask, but I can also click here on this outside tab to make separate adjustments to the outside of this mask. For this particular shot, I might just drop the global brightness a little bit. Using the magnetic mask for color correction allows you to have way more control over the corrections you make. The magnetic mask is not limited to color correction effects because you can actually apply the magnetic mask on many of Final Cut Pro's built-in effects. Let's assume you wanted to point out a specific boat in the shot. You could add the colorize effect by dragging and dropping it onto the viewer, adjusting the mask as necessary, and then tracking the shot. Or maybe you want to create a special effect to highlight an object on the screen in another way. You could drag and drop something like the bad TV effect onto the clip, track that, and then head over to the inspector window to adjust the settings of that clip to achieve results like this. Or maybe you want to censor something like a license plate. You could use the pixelate effect, again by dropping the effect into the viewer window, or by applying the effect and then clicking on the mask icon over here to add a magnetic mask. So you're essentially able to track almost anything you want to and apply various effects to it. Or you can duplicate your clip before applying an effect, add the effect you want, track it, and then trim the clip and add a transition like a crossfade to animate that effect in over time. As you can probably tell, this opens up a whole new world of possibilities in terms of adding effects in Final Cut Pro. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Brad and we do fun Final Cut Pro things here. So go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Having this magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro allows us to fake depth. 
Let's assume we have a portrait shot like this, and for whatever reason, we weren't able to shoot at a wide enough aperture to blur the background the way we wanted to. We can add the Gaussian blur effect to our subject. The magnetic mask does a great job, so there's no need to refine it. So I'll just track it. I'll click done. And now instead of having the subject blurred, we need to blur the background. So I can click on the mask icon over here and select invert masks. I'll adjust my blur settings until I get a nice natural looking blur. And if I turn this effect off and on again, you can see how we're creating that depth between our subject and the background. There are so many ways to create different transitions using the magnetic mask and you're only limited by your imagination. Let me quickly show you how I created this transition. I have my two shots on the timeline and I'll select the second shot and hit command option and the up arrow to lift it from the primary storyline. I'll drag the clip over my first shot so that I start to run into the frame before the first shot ends. Instead of applying the magnetic mask from my effects browser, I can use the shortcut Control command m to apply the magnetic mask to the selected clip. I'll then refine the mask and hit Analyze to track it. When it's finished, I'll hit Done. And if I scrub through over here, you can see how I run into the frame over the first shot. Perfect. Next, I'll hold down Option and click and drag to create a copy of this clip. On the bottom layer, I'll delete the magnetic mask effect. So now I have myself isolated on top and the background on the bottom. Then I'll trim the bottom clip and I'll select the beginning of a clip and hit Command T to add a cross dissolve. Now what happens is I run into the frame and then the background slowly fades in. One more time, this is what that looks like. I'd love to know what you will be using the magnetic mask for in your videos, so please leave a comment down below and let me know. This is not the only new feature in Final Cut Pro 11 though, so make sure you watch this video next if you haven't already to learn more about what's new in Final Cut Pro 11.